This video is called the Bill of Rights, and we're going to be talking about some basic freedoms that we enjoy as American people. So let us begin here. Here is our Bill of Rights tree. We'll start at the bottom with what the Bill of Rights is. So you've probably heard of the Bill of Rights before. It's kind of an important thing. The Bill of Rights are the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. The, an amendment means a change or an addition. So it's basically stuff that has been added on to the Constitution since it was written back in 1787. The Bill of Rights are famous because they protect basic freedoms of the American people. They were added in 1791, uh, only four years after the Constitution was written. Some people were skeptical of the Constitution because it didn't include a Bill of Rights and they thought it was important. So they decided to add it um, to get people to vote for the Constitution and accept it as our national government. Today, there are 27 amendments to the Constitution. So over the last couple hundred years, we've added 17 additional amendments past the Bill of Rights, but only the first 10 are the Bill of Rights, and they protect the basic rights of all Americans. So six of these 10 Bill of, um, amendments are actually really important to us today. The other four, not so much. So we're going to really basically cover six of them um, in a little bit more depth in this video. So first of all, we'll start with Amendment 1. Makes good sense, right? Amendment 1 is called the Speech Amendment because it protects your freedom of speech. It might be the most famous of all the amendments. That's a question mark there because that's up to interpretation, I guess. But the amend Amendment 1 is the biggest. It came first. It was actually, I think, what the founders thought was the most important. It actually protects five things. First of all, it protects our freedom of religion. It says that you can worship whatever religion you choose. And also, and probably more importantly, that the government can't push one religion um, as a state religion. So you can't um, support one, one religion over another. That's for why there's no pr prayers allowed in school, because school is a government, and a government organization, and that would be supporting one religion. Secondly, the First Amendment protects your rights to freedom of speech both vocal speech and symbolic speech, which might be like dress code or symbolism of some kind. The First Amendment protects your right to free press, to publish things in the newspaper that might be critical of the government. That's okay in our country, not in every country in the world, by the way. The Fourth Amendment protects your right to peacefully protest or petition the government. You can tell the government what you don't like. And lastly, the First Amendment protects your right to assemble and that means that you can gather with other people. The government couldn't tell you to, to not hang out with certain people outside of, um, you know, of the government telling you what to do. So moving on to Amendment 2. This is a, actually a very controversial amendment as of the recording of this video back in 2012. The gun amendment, I refer to it as, because this is the amendment that protects your right to own a weapon. It, it actually does two things. Firstly, the Second Amendment allows you to have to serve in your state militia, and then that doesn't really apply too much today. But the part that does apply is that the people have the right to quote unquote keep and bear arms, which means they can own, possess, and use a firearm. You see, this is a quote from James Madison: "Americans have the right and advantages of being armed, unlike the citizens of other of the countries whose governments are afraid to trust the people with arms." So James Madison says this quote, and he believes that it's an important right of the Americans because the government trusts them to have guns and not use them um, in the wrong way. So this has been part of our country for a long time, and the founders really supported this belief. Nowadays, it's controversial because some people out there don't think that um, guns should be allowed in our society. Uh, we're going to skip Amendment 3 and move on to Amendment 4. This is the Privacy Amendment. And basically what Amendment 4 says is that you cannot um, have your belongings searched or you cannot be arrested by the government unless they have what's called a warrant. And a warrant is a court order which authorizes the police to either arrest you or search you. So the police just can't come up to your house, knock on the door, walk in, and search around your stuff and find something that might be illegal. The police have to first have reasonable suspicion and get a warrant. So this protects you from unlawful search and seizure by the government. And here's a, uh, a little cartoon about the Fourth Amendment. Apparently, it's critical of the Supreme Court maybe weakening the Fourth Amendment um, based on some, some rulings, which I'm not sure about. Okay, here is Amendment 5. 
there is a really a lot to this one, so I'm not going to cover every little piece of it. I'm, I'm just bas basically going to give you a brief overview. Basically, what Amendment 5 says is that before you go to court, you must be indicted by a jury. And indicted means formally charged with a crime. Uh, it's actually a two-step process. You go to a grand jury first, and a grand jury just decides if there's enough evidence for a trial. If you get arrested, you go before a grand jury, they say, you know what, there's really not enough evidence here, no trial. You are then free to go. The grand jury protects you from ever, ever even having a trial. If the grand jury does indict you and formally press charges against you, you will go to a trial and it will be heard by a pettit jury. And this is the, the kind of jury you're familiar with that actually decides the outcome and the punishment of a trial. The weird part about the Fifth Amendment is that that seems like it makes pretty good sense. But there's also this other part tacked on for some reason that says that the government can actually take your property um, without your consent if it's put to what's called public use and you are paid just compensation for that property. This is called eminent domain and it actually allows the government to take private property and put it and make it public property. I'm not sure why it's part of this amendment, um, but this is eminent domain is a very controversial part of the Fifth Amendment that we'll be studying as well. Here is a little um, cartoon about eminent domain saying that this land is your land, this land is my land, but actually it's my land because the Supreme Court says that the government can take your property. All right, moving on to Amendment 6. This amendment protects the rights of people accused of a crime. And basically what that means is that just because you're accused of a crime does not mean you're guilty and you actually have some, some freedoms and rights. You have to be informed of what, what your crime is. You can't just be kept in the dark on why you're put on trial. The trial must take place where the crime is committed, so they can't like ship you off to England for a trial, as they used to do in the 1700s. The trial must be fast. It has to occur in a reasonable amount of time. They can't put your trial five years down the road. You have to have an impartial jury, which means that it has to be unbiased, and open-minded, and it can't have, um, you know, you can't have people you know on the jury that might go for or against you. You must be provided, um, you have the option of legal representation. You can hire your own lawyer to defend you, or you can be, um, you'll be given a lawyer to legally represent you. It's called the public defender, so you don't have to pay for that. You can call witnesses in your defense during your own trial, and you have to be present at your trial. You don't, the trial won't take place without you being there. Here is a little cartoon making fun of public defenders, saying that since you can't afford an attorney, one will be inflated for you. And here is somebody blowing up a fake lawyer, which is kind of poking fun at the sometimes the quality of public defenders. Um, they're, they're sometimes very good, but oftentimes, um, if you have a public defender, you don't have as good a chance in your trial. In Amendment 8, it talks about cruel and unusual punishment. Basically says, no excessive bail can be set, which means that if you get arrested and you want to get out of jail before your trial, you could post bail and bail is the money you pay to get out. And they can't make that bail so high that it doesn't make any sense for you. And then secondly, there are no cruel or unusual punishments allowed. The, the punishment must fit the crime. So what cruel and unusual means kind of varies depending on who you ask and what the Supreme Court says, but you can probably picture what that means. And then finally, there are Four other amendments we didn't talk about. Here are the ones that don't really have much of an impact on your life. I will let you just simply read it. I won't cover them all. But as you can see, the Bill of Rights does protect many of our basic freedoms. And we'll be talking about the, all um, of the six amendments in this video. We won't be talking about these ones because they don't really have as much um, impact on us today. So in class, we will continue working on Amendment 1. Um, next time you come in.